Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California present... bring you Mr. Lee Bowman as star of I Won't Take a Minute, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you Mr. Lee Bowman in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! She was very good to look at, which is why I waited till I was 25 and met her. Here's how she went. First, a lot of gold all beaten up into a froth and poured over her head and allowed to set there in crinkly little curls. Blue eyes and a mouth with real lines. And in addition, well, she had everything just about right. And believe me, I was going to throw away the sales slip and not return the merchandise once it got to my house. That's why I nearly went nuts every evening waiting for her to come out of the building where she worked. She was always the last one out, and this particular evening she was later than usual. It got dark. The street lights came on. And the rush hour was over before she put in an appearance. Kenny? Oh, oh gee, Kenny, I'm sorry. You've been waiting long? Oh, no, no. I just nearly got run in for picketing the place, that's all. I hurried all I could. Please don't be mad at me, Kenny. I'm not mad at you. The slave driver you worked for. Why do you always have to be the last one out? Oh, it's only for another week. Yeah. Come on, let's go. I got to deliver this package on the way home. For his nibs. But you're not going home. We're going to Philharmonic. Thursday, remember? Oh, it won't take any time at all, honey. It's just around the corner. 415 Martin Street. Okay. That guy nerves me up making you play messenger girl after hours. Oh, let's don't talk about Mr. Heston. Let's talk about us. Been counting the days? All day. Thirteen left. And a half. Don't forget the half if it's to be a noon wedding. <laughs> Why all the fuss about the half? Oh, I don't like thirteen by itself. I'll be glad when it's tomorrow and only 12 days left. See, you're cute. The more I know you, the cuter you get. <laughs> I bet you won't say that a year from now. You'll be calling me your old lady then. Uh, you'll always be Steffi to me. Just Steffi. Not even Stephanie? No, too sophisticated, too foreign sounding. <laughs> Steffi, that's you. <laughs> hey, uh, what number are you supposed to deliver that package to? 415. That must be it. What a dump. Does your boss have many customers in dumps like this? I don't know. Hold a, a match for me, will you, Kenny? I can't see the name. There, that's better? Yeah, uh-huh. But I still don't see uh, it. What was the name? Muller, apartment 4B. Oh, oh, here, here it is. Name card's fallen out of the slit and gotten lost. No wonder I couldn't find it. Maybe they're not home. Well, I'll ring it again. There it is. I don't like those automatic door latches. You never know who's up there. Oh, don't be silly. Wait here, honey. I won't take a minute. I never timed a cigarette. I suppose they take around five minutes. This one seemed to take longer, but then, uh, look who I was waiting for. I punched it out with my foot and lit another. I thought, won't take a minute. Yeah, I might have known it. I thought, what's she doing, saying a T up there? I counted my change just to give myself something to do. I took off my hat and looked it over like I'd never seen it before. Five cigarettes later, she still hadn't come back. Things happened. Nothing much. Little things that were to last so long. A stout lady in a ratty-looking fur coat came in holding some candy in one hand and a little boy by the other. Smack you good. I'll cut off your head and put it in the garbage can. Now, Dwighty, I don't want to hear another word. If you don't hush up, I'll... After they'd gone, more waiting started in. I commenced tracing patterns with my feet. Circles, diagonals, Maltese crosses. Finally, I got fed up. 
I stepped over to the bell panel, picked out 4B, and nearly sent the button through to the other side of the wall. I could hear it ringing away off somewhere. Quiet house. Too quiet. I leaned on the bell till my thumb joint got all white down to my wrist. And something did happen. I heard the door of the automatic elevator open. I waited, nonchalant-like, filing my fingernails. I thought I'd play a little hurt when she arrived. I could see it was her, all right, walking toward me. She opened the door and then walked past me like she never saw me before. I let her go on, figured she'd turn around by the time she got to the door. But no. Steffi. Hey, Steffi, wait. Steffi. Hey, Steffi, what's the big idea? I beg your pardon. Oh, I, I, I thought you were... I mean, you, you're dressed just like... I would advise you to be sure to whom you are talking before you go to grab a strange girl by the coat. Oh, no kidding. You, you look a lot like her, even the clothes. That little tan and the, the, the red really, shoes. Really, I don't find this amusing. Okay, sister, pardon me for living. Next time, make sure it's one of the girls that live here. It was a shock. I didn't like the looks of the place from the beginning. Up to then, I was just sore. Now I began to get scared. Maybe there's some guy up there trying to get funny with her, I thought. I better get up there fast and find out what this is. So I laid my hand flat over all the bells in the place so somebody would open up. Now open up in there. Open up or I'll bust the door down. Do you hear me? Steffi. Are you in there, honey? Baby, why don't you say something? Oh, that's what I want to know. Who are you? Building superintendent. Uh, uh, got a pass key to this flat? I have. What do you want in there? My girl. She took a package up. I've been waiting for her downstairs. I don't know how long. She never came down again. Now they won't answer the bell. No, wait a minute, young fella. She couldn't be in this flat. Oh, don't try to tell me. Hey, don't you try to tell me. I say she couldn't be. Why? Uh, I'll show you why. Hey. Now, you see why? It's empty. Empty. Nobody lives here. But there was someone here a while ago. She rang the bell and they let her in. Mister, this place ain't been rented for six months. Listen, she came in here, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you and the little girl had a quarrel, eh? Maybe she figured to play a little joke on you. <laughs> Give you the slip. We never had any quarrel. We're getting married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you go to her place? You'll probably find her there. Well, she didn't come out again, I tell you. I was there at the door the whole time. Uh, what about the back way? Is there a back way out? Not a back way. There's a delivery entrance, but that goes right past my quarters. Nobody went out that way. Uh, Muller. The name was Muller. Well, if he doesn't live in 4B, where does he live? Muller. Huh. We never had anyone with that name in the whole 12 years I've been working here. <laughs> Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you a star, Mr. Lee Bowman, in I Won't Take a Minute. Roma Wines presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. In the hurried, hectic shopping weeks between now and Christmas, There'll be many a night when you'll be glad to relax in the warmth and comfort of your own home. And what more delightful way to enjoy a quiet, restful evening than with a glass full of Roma California Muscatel and nuts or cake. You'll thoroughly enjoy this magnificent Roma wine, so tempting with the distinctive fragrance of the world-famous Muscat grape, with its rich, mellow sweetness, its glowing golden fire. Roma Muscatel is delightful with desserts, too. Famed hostess Elsa Maxwell says, Roma Muscatel is a sure-to-please, easy-to-serve entertainment wine when guests drop in. Like all Roma wines, Roma Muscatel is a true wine, crushed from selected grapes, unhurriedly guided to taste perfection by age-old winemaking skill. And Roma's new low prices save you as much as one-fourth. Get Roma Muscatel tomorrow. Insist on Roma. R-O-M-A, for uniformly fine wine quality at low cost. That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. 
And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Lee Bowman as Kenny in Cornell Woolrich's story of a vanishing lady, I Won't Take a Minute. A play well calculated to keep you in suspense. Cop on the beat was a nice guy. He rang every bell in every flat of the building and questioned the occupants. No one had heard anything. No one had seen her. Finally, a single plain clothes man was dropped off at the door. Lieutenant Gilman. He kept calling me Bud. He looked around the empty flat, and then he looked at me. Bud, there's nothing to show that this girl or anyone else came in here. I tell you, she rang the bell of this flat, and someone released the door catch for her from up here. All right, all right. Assuming she got in here, how'd she get out? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe the fire is... Look at those windows. Look at the dust on these frames. A person can't move in a place like this without it showing. Listen, don't do this to me, will you? You make it sound like she didn't come here with me at all. That's what it does sound like, bud. Look, I was taking her to the concert tonight. We go every Thursday. Uh, Here's our ticket. I think we'd better build this thing from the ground up and see what we've got. Now, what's this girl's name? Stephanie. Stephanie Riska. Address? 120 Farragut. Uh Uh-huh. What's she look like? Well, she... She, she comes up to about here next to me. Blonde, little curls close to her head, blue eyes. I, I, I'm no good at description. Don't I, let it get you, bud. I'm not scared because she's gone. I'm scared because she's gone in such a crazy way. I, I can't get a grip on it. Now, you say you met her at uh, 615 outside the Bailey Goodwin building with a package to be delivered here. Who'd she work for? A, a press clipping service. The Green Star is called. It's operated by a guy named Hessen. Big outfit? Just him and a secretary and an office boy. She was getting 22 a week. All right, bud. You've given me something indefinite. We'll, uh, we'll do some checking. But uh, first of all, we go back to the place she worked. Oh, what a telephone booth. She told me the place was small, but I never figured on this. Not even a window. All right, all right. Let's have a look. Desk, filing cabinet. <clears throat> yeah, clippings. Well, so far, your story checks. Except for one thing. What's that? There's no file for anyone named Muller. Oh, this must be her desk. Yeah. Hmm. Shears, glue, clips. <laughs> not much of a personal touch here, not even a hair pick. Uh-oh. Find something? Uh, nothing special. Well, you found something there. I saw you drop it in an envelope and stick it in your pocket. Listen, bud, who's running this investigation? You or me? Oh, sorry. You, I guess. Okay, let's keep it that way. Our next stop was one of those bungalow-type places in the outskirts. That was where Hessen lived, the guy she worked for. Good evening. Good evening. You Mr. Hatton? That's right. I'm from police headquarters. Uh, may I come in? Oh, I uh, certainly. Uh, won't you uh, sit down, gentlemen? We won't take up much of your time, sir. First of all, uh, do you know anyone named Muller at uh, 415 Martin Street? No, I don't know anyone by that name. I think we have a Miller, a Mrs. Elsie Miller on our list, who divorces and marries quite frequently. <laughs> Will that do? Yeah, she owes us $29. You didn't send a package over to Muller, apartment 4B, 415 Martin Street at 615 this evening? No, I'm sure I didn't. But uh, wait a minute. It's easy enough to confirm that. Oh, uh, Stephanie. Steffi. Did you call me, Mr. Hessel? Uh, yes, my dear. Oh, this is my assistant, uh, gentleman, Miss uh, Stephanie Riska. <laughs> That isn't Steffi. She's calling somebody else by her name. My dear young I don't man. Understand. I, uh, she came out of that building while I was waiting. I, I spoke to her. We'll discuss that later. Uh, now then, miss, uh, how long have you been working for Mr. Hessen? Since October of last year. About eight months now. And your name is Stephanie Risker? Why, yes, of course. Have you uh, any identification on you? I don't know. Maybe you. Uh, maybe there is something here in my handbag. You mind if I look? It's all right, my dear. He's uh, from the police. Oh. Oh, well, in that case. Thank you. Listen, I don't know what these two are trying to pull, but she's not Steffi. You've got to believe me. She came out of that building dressed like Steffi. The way Steffi was dressed when she went in. Stop that, will you? Uh, thank you, Miss Liska. I'm sorry to inconvenience you. It's quite all right. I I noticed you have quite a supply of chewing gum there. That's hard to get these days. <laughs> I make a hobby of it. Have some? Oh, thanks. My mouth's kind of dry. 
Well, uh, uh, Mr. Hatch, oh, it's quite all right. I don't know what this young man has got himself mixed up in, but uh, if we were able to help... Oh, him... you did help a lot, sir. Oh. Come along, bud. I've got some more checking to do. This time, it's on you. Okay, bud, now stop talking. Spill it. What's your pitch? I told you the truth. That girl wasn't Steffi. I never saw her before. Was uh, the man Hessen? Oh, he looked just like him. This girl of yours, uh, what kind of gum did she chew? She didn't chew gum. She hated it. You ask me what it was I picked up back there in the office. Well, here's what it was. A wad of gum stuck under the de- edge of the desk. That girl back there at Hessen's place belongs in that office, but She had a letter addressed to herself in that handbag and her initials on the outside of it. It wasn't a new one and it wasn't fake. What's your racket, bud? Are you a pushover for mental observation? Or did you do something to some little blonde, blue-eyed number, and are you trying to pass the buck before we even found out about it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I am nuts. Things like this... Well, the things like this just don't happen. They, they can't. One minute she walks into a building... You haven't and... produced a single person all evening long that actually laid eye on this girl of yours. Where's the folks? Where'd she come from? Wisconsin, I think. Her folks are all dead. <laughs> I thought so. Hmm. Well, I'll give you one more spin for your money, bud. You stand or fall by the place you say she lived. Have you uh, been there? Yes. Could you describe it? Okay. Sticking in the mirror of the, the dresser, she's got a litho of the Holy Mother. On the radiator, she, she's got a rag doll that I won for her at Coney Island. On, on a little shelf against the wall, she's got a gas ring with, it, with a tube running up to the jet. From the light fixture to the, to the jet, there's a string attached. And she'll have stockings hanging there to dry. Are you listening? Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Will you remember those things? Yeah, but we'll see. Now listen, bud, get this straight. I don't want one word out of you the whole time we're here, you hear? I won't say a word, so help me. Yes? You got a girl named uh, Stephanie Risker living here? Second floor front. She ain't home now. I'm from the police. I think you better let us in. Oh, well, certainly. Let's see her room, please. Yeah, follow me. She's a nice, clean roomer. I'd hate to lose her. I hope she's not in any trouble. No trouble. Now, Gilman, right over there. Hey, it's changed. They've changed it all around. Shut up. Has uh, she always had it fixed this way, ma'am? Well, since the first day she's here, only one thing I got to complain about. Mm. There it is again, chewing gum. <laughs> she leaves it all over. <laughs> Let's see that. Aha, uh-huh, I thought so. Exhibit C, bud. Same as the other two. She belongs in that office and she belongs in this room. Uh, oh. Look out. I... You better hold your friend. Let him fold. I... This isn't anything to the falls. He's going to be taking five or ten minutes from now. What'd he do? Murder her? Not her, but I've got a good hunch he murdered someone and picked the wrong number and name out of her hat. I didn't hear any more they said while we were going down the stairs. The light bulbs in the place were doing funny things, turning red, spinning around in spirals. I was still on my feet, but I suppose you'd notice it. The spinning didn't stop till we got to the foot of the stairs. The thing that stopped it was an umbrella stand beside the front door. It had a knotty walking stick jutting up out of it. I grabbed it in my free hand as he walked me past it. Watch out, Lieutenant. He's going to... Hey, you... I didn't stop to investigate whether I'd killed him or only knocked him out. I was a block down the street before the landlady could open her mouth to scream. I made for the Martin Street flat. That was instinctive. The place I'd last seen her, calling me back. When I got there, I ganged up on the janitor's bell and waited a thousand years. Oh, it's you again. Uh, What is it? Didn't you find her yet? Uh, What happened to that detective fellow that was with you? Uh, He uh, he sent me back to take another look. Uh, You don't have to come up. Just uh, give me the pass key. Uh, All right, son. Come on in. My head was still spinning when I let myself into the door of apartment 4B. I don't know what I was looking for. Some clue, I guess. Some magic clue that would pop up and give her back to me. I tested the walls for secret panels. What a laugh and a 50 buck a month flat. I dug out plaster with my bare nails, cased the cracks between the floorboards. I'd been there about 10 minutes when I heard steps coming up the hall. 
I held my breath. All right, Sammy. Come out of there with your hands up or I commit to... Give me a minute, please. One minute. Maybe I'll find it. Find what? Please, one minute. If you want out of there by the time I count ten, I commit to... Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. One. Two. Three. I didn't stop to think. I crossed Four. the room and threw open the window. Five. The one that opened on the fire escape. Down looked too far, hey. so I started climbing. Hey! Hey! Get out of there, you! I'll break every bone in your body. You won't live to get into headquarters. I didn't yell back at him. I was saving my breath. Come on, after him. Keep that light on him. On the roof, I took a quick look both directions. There was about a yard-high partition wall dividing it from the next roof over. But before I could get to it... Hold it, man. Hold your fire. Oh. You won't make it. Oh. Keep that light focused on his eyes. He may be fainting. I... I think I... I busted my leg. Yeah. Well, let's see. Now, just bark your shin a little. Oh, wait till I finish with you, wise guy. Oh, what are you waiting for? Go ahead. You promised me a beating. Go ahead. Don't you worry. Hey, where did that come from? What? That package there beside you. Package? Package. That's it. The package you took inside with it. Hold that light steady. What's in it? Yeah. What is it? Newspapers. Newspapers, it's a dummy. Look, those papers, they've had stuff clipped out of them. That proves they came from Hessen's clipping agency. Well, doesn't it? Someone did bring a package here tonight. Oh, what a sap I've been. I kept thinking about that room. She was never in that room. I was right about that. They must have grabbed her in the hall and taken her straight up here to the roof through the skylight. But why? I don't know. Maybe that steel plated landlady knows, and if she does, she's going to talk and talk fast. <laughs> All right, Grandma, come on, spill it. Uh, you can't scare me. I've got bigger men than you on my side. What do you mean, your side? Wouldn't you like to know? All I have to do is make one telephone call. I have the number right here. Let's see that number. Ooh, take it. Call it yourself. Who gave you that number? Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. Who gave you this number? The FBI man who was here. Now you know who I'm working for. Go ahead. Call the number. Oh, I get it. Tell me, Grandma, what did this FBI man look like? All right, I'll tell you. All you have to do is say yes or no. The guy's about uh, my height. Bald. Wears pinch glasses, right? Many. He got you to work with him so this woman he described as one of his agents could step into the identity of this Stephanie Risker, right? You seem to know all about it. I know more than that. He wasn't an FBI man, and the girl who took Stephanie Risker's place was not a federal agent. Well, then who was he? I'm not sure, Grandma, but I've got a hunch. Calhoun! Joe! Calhoun, get out there. This place Myrtle Avenue fast and keep it spotted until we get there. Gilman. Gilman. Do you think she's all right? I don't know. Keep your fingers crossed, bud, and pray. Where are they? I told them to keep this house covered. Gone. Nobody here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, now, sir, my house. Stand back against the wall. Somebody's coming. Gentlemen, you in here? Calhoun, what's the big idea? I told you to keep this place spotted. Now they're gone. I tailed them. They piled into a car, locked up the house, and left. Where to? Pier 7, North River. They got some kind of a fuzzy tramp steamer, and it shoved off in less than a quarter of an hour. I tried to reach Was you. Was the other girl with him? No, two men and a stringy blonde they call Alger. That's all. Too late. We're too late. We can pull them up at quarantine. I'll make them talk. Come on, let's get out of here and get some fresh air. Thanks, don't it? Yeah. Smells like they'd had to place fumigate it or something. Hey. What's the matter? That smell. That's gasoline. Gasoline? I hear something. A, a clock. The basement. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, she's down here, all right. Go back upstairs, bud. I'll bring her up. Tell me. Tell me now. Don't wait till you get her. Yeah, she's alive. Come on. Get her out of here. Don't you hear that ticking? I better wet that bomb. Down. Come back here, Calhoun. You'll never make it. That bomb will blow you. She'll be around a second or two. How's Calhoun? Burned pretty bad. It was an incendiary. Oh, Kenny. Oh, baby, it's okay. <laughs> sure. Everything's okay now, Steffi. Who are you? This is Lieutenant Gilman. We owe a lot to him, Steffi. Thanks, Lieutenant Gilman. Ah, I'm just a dumb flatfoot, Steffi. And I had to be conked over the head before I got wise to what was going on. Even then, I didn't figure it right. I figured Hessen and his pals were a bunch of spies or something. Well, weren't they? Well, Hessen became an American citizen in 1929. Up to now, his record's absolutely clean. Oh, I'm glad of that. I'd hate to be working for a spy. But, but I don't get it. 
Why did they want Steffi out of the way? That was Olga's doing. The girl who was impersonating you, Steffi. You see, she's Hessen's sister. She's a fugitive from a couple of war crimes and figured the least her brother could do for her was to furnish her with a nice, clean nationality. Their original plan was to bump Steffi off in that empty flat and leave her there without anything to identify her. Only, only they figured on her coming there alone. There was no time to work out a plan on the spot, so they scrammed over the roof, taking Steffi with them. Hey, Gilman, we're doing headquarters. You coming? Yeah, 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 right away, right away. Well, I gotta go, kid. Thanks, Gilman. Thanks for everything. Ah, uh, I'm glad to help you out. Hey, another thing, bud, you weren't lying about. She is pretty. <laughs> no hard feelings? I mean, about me hitting you over the head? Oh, oh, say, I almost forgot. Something I meant to give you before we uh, say goodnight. Oh, you, you've done enough. Oh, that's what you think. Oh. It was uh, a while before I knew what hit me. It felt like a cement mixer. When my head cleared, Steffi and I had changed roles. She was the one bending over me. And he said to tell you no hard feelings, but when anyone socks Dick Gilman with a walking stick, they get socked back, even if they're the best of friends. <laughs> he said that, did he? Does it still hurt? I'm still seeing stars. Oh, gee, Kenny, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't care. I'm seeing you, too. Listen. Listen, it's midnight. Yeah. Only 12 days to the wedding now, baby. We've licked the 13th. Roma Wines have brought you Lee Bowman as star of I Won't Take a Minute. Tonight's study in Suspense. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. This year, you're probably having difficulty finding the Christmas gifts you want. Why not solve your gift problems with famous Roma Wines? You flatter your friends, save both time and money shopping. Roma offers you a full selection of choice California wines. For entertaining, Roma Sherry, Port, Muscatel, or Tokay. For added mealtime enjoyment, red, robust Roma Burgundy, or delicate pale gold Sautern. For happy occasions that demand the best, sparkling, unforgettable Roma Champagne. Each of these fine Roma wines is a true wine. Each a superb, unhurriedly perfected masterpiece of the vintner's ancient art. Delight your friends this Christmas with gifts of Roma wines. Give one bottle, several, or a case. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And Roma wines now offer you the same uniformly fine quality at the lowest prices in years. Insist on Roma, R-O-M-A. Fine Roma wines for good living, good giving this Christmas. Lee Bowman appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures and will soon be seen co-starring with Rosalind Russell in their production, She Wouldn't Say Yes. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you Mr. Robert Taylor as star of Suspense, Radio's Outstanding Theater of Thrills. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The Skippy Hollywood Theater, KQW San Jose, follows in just a moment.